Welcome back to Universeo. Today, what would we see during interstellar travel? Proxima Centauri is the closest star system to Earth and is considered the nearest interstellar destination. It is about 20 trillion miles, or about four light years away from Earth. We can't get to it using today's technology because traveling to Proxima Centauri B would likely take 750,000 years, which is an extremely long time. However, with advancements in propulsion systems, reaching Proxima Centauri could become feasible in the future. Suppose one day humans built a spacecraft that could fly at 60% the speed of light, then we could travel from Earth to Proxima Centauri in about seven years. During this interstellar travel, we experience many astounding phenomena of our universe and have a much deeper understanding of special relativity. Imagine we have an engine that can deliver a constant amount of thrust, which steadily accelerates the spacecraft and pushes it farther from Earth. To provide a comfortable interstellar travel, we cap our acceleration at one g. This means that reaching 60% of the speed of light would take approximately 200 days. As the spaceship's speed increases, it becomes progressively harder to accelerate further due to the phenomenon of relativistic mass increase. An object's mass effectively grows as its speed approaches the speed of light. The heavier an object becomes, the more energy is required to accelerate it. Consequently, reaching or exceeding the speed of light is impossible, as it would demand an infinite amount of energy to reach that ultimate speed. Looking through the spacecraft window, you'll notice that light from the sides and behind appears to come from the front, creating a concentrated and distorted view of space in the direction of motion. Imagine a star emitting a beam of light toward a stationary spacecraft. By tracing the photon's path backward, we can pinpoint the star's location. However, when the spacecraft begins to move, the light beam must have been emitted earlier to reach it. From the spacecraft's perspective, it is the star and photon moving toward it. As a result, tracing the photon's path from the moving spacecraft makes the star's apparent position shift, making it seem farther forward than it really is. By applying this to light rays from all directions, we find they appear angled from the front, making the universe visually contract ahead of us. This effect, called the aberration of light, becomes more pronounced as we accelerate. Stars in front seem to recede but grow brighter, while the sky behind stretches, appearing darker and closer. Another effect we observe is the apparent distortion of surrounding objects. To understand and simulate this distortion, imagine a thin rod initially at rest. When stationary, all photons it emits originate from the same position along the z-axis, so it appears straight in an image taken by the camera. Now, if we accelerate the rod toward the camera with the rod perpendicular to its direction of motion, it continuously emits photons as it moves closer to the camera. This time, photons reaching the camera simultaneously will have slightly different z-axis positions. Connecting the starting points of these photons forms a hyperbola, representing the rod's distorted appearance in the camera image. If we apply this transformation to all the objects as well as the three-dimensional space grid, then we can clearly see the distortion. If we were to pass by an object, it would appear slightly tilted toward us due to an effect called the terrell penrose rotation. To visualize this, consider a cube initially at rest. Photons emitted by the cube create a square image when they reach a camera. However, when the cube accelerates, the light rays from its two left-hand corners no longer align precisely. This causes both the left and bottom surfaces to remain visible simultaneously. From our perspective, this distortion appears as though the cube has been rotated. If someone on Earth takes a photo every second and transmits it to astronauts in the spacecraft via radio signals, as the spacecraft continues to accelerate, astronauts will find that the frequency of receiving photos becomes lower and lower. This is because the radio signals take longer and longer to catch up with the spacecraft as the spacecraft moves farther and farther away from the Earth. This is the Doppler effect. It makes the image of the Earth shift towards red color and the light's intensity appears to weaken. 
To the astronauts, the passage of time on Earth seems to slow down. If we combine all the received images to form a video, all movements on Earth occur in slow motion. In front of us, the opposite effect occurs. The spacecraft moves closer to Proxima Centauri b. We receive the photos of Proxima Centauri b more and more frequently, making its clock tick faster and faster. Meanwhile, Proxima Centauri b also appears brighter and its color shifts toward a blue color. After one year of acceleration, the engine pushes the spacecraft ever faster, making it reach 60% of the speed of light. At such speeds, classical physics no longer accurately describes what happens. Instead, we need to use Einstein's theory of special relativity. Einstein uses a mathematical model that is called space-time to describe our universe. Space-time fuses three dimensions of space and one dimension of time into a single four-dimensional continuum. Inside space-time, the history of an object's location through time traces out a line or curve referred to as the object's world line. Before takeoff, the spacecraft is stationary relative to the Earth. If we choose Earth as the reference frame and draw their world lines on the space-time diagram, then both of them will only move through the time dimension. However, once the spacecraft launches and accelerates, its world line begins to diverge. From the perspective of an astronaut in the spacecraft, it is Earth that is moving away quickly. Due to time dilation, clocks on moving objects slow down relative to stationary observers. Thus, it is Earth's clock that appears to run slower. If this astronaut has a twin brother who stays on Earth, the astronaut would perceive his brother aging more slowly and becoming younger relative to him. The traveling twin must decelerate before landing on Proxima Centauri b. During this phase, the twin on Earth appears to age rapidly from the astronaut's perspective, as Earth's clock seems to speed up. Consequently, the astronaut perceives his sibling aging much faster and eventually becoming older than himself. When the traveling twin returns home, he will find that the twin who remained on Earth has aged more. Another important effect of special relativity is length contraction. From the perspective of astronauts on the fast-moving spaceship, it is the entire universe that is moving backward. This movement causes the universe to appear compressed in the direction of travel, which shortens the apparent distance to Proxima Centauri b. For an observer on Earth, Proxima Centauri b is approximately four light years away. However, if the spacecraft travels at 60% of the speed of light, it would take only 3.2 years for the astronauts on board to reach Proxima Centauri b. As we accelerate further, the distortion of space-time becomes increasingly apparent. We approach the speed of light, yet it remains an unreachable limit. Our field of view continues to contract and its intensity becomes infinitive. Behind us, an immense void of darkness stretches endlessly. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please leave comments and subscribe to this channel.